but I was almost one of those statistics because I almost drowned when I was five years old. And then my mom got me into swim lessons, which what we're seeing when the study, the study of University of Memphis and the USA Swimming Foundation of Philip 66 is that parents are kind of shielding their, their kids away from the water. Um, and my mom went against the grain and got me the, the, uh, the lesson so that I learned how to swim so that I wasn't, you know, I wouldn't fall victim again to almost drowning. And that's kind of the big push for the drowning prevention of make the make a splash initiative is to just get kids water safe. Well, why is it more so with with children of color? Is it that they don't have access to lessons to the pool? What, what, why is it happening more with black and Hispanic children? Well, definitely in the past, that was a big issue was uh, accessibility to pools, to getting lessons. Um, not so much as much now. Uh, the University of Memphis did a study in 2010, and there were three major factors. Number one being fear, number two being parental backing, and number three being physical appearance. And what trumped all of that was fear. Mm -hmm. uh, children themselves either had fear from you know, situations like my own where I almost drowned or parents are projecting their own fears onto their children and they think of water almost like fire, hot, stay away, dangerous, um, instead of giving them the swim lessons. I mean, it's a big problem in the U.S., but there is a solution in the swim lessons. Okay, and let's talk about these lessons. Um, I think parents may first think, I can't afford lessons. I'm trying to make it day to day as it is, or either I don't even have time to get them to lessons. Let's, let's talk about how, how to make this a priority. Well, that's, you said the perfect word. It's really making it a priority. Uh, a lot of people, the summer's coming around, a lot of people think of swimming as just as an activity, but it really is a life skill. And I, I always make the comparison with riding a bike because it's one of those things that no matter what age you are, and it's never too late, once you learn, you never forget. Um, so we need to change that whole focus of just thinking of, of it as an activity and also change it into um, it being a life skill that we need to equip our children with. Um, it's a big problem. We can definitely change it. And, you know, the Make a Splash initiative um, created by uh, USA Swimming Foundation and Philip 66 is really taking that first step. I've been working with them for the past four years, and we've reached over a million kids, 1.2 to be exact. So. We're taking the first step and, you know, like I said, it's just making that that switch of that viewing it is not just an activity, but a priority. Uh, Helen, can everybody swim? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, a lot of people say, you know, black people don't float. I can tell you I've been swimming for 20 years. I have an Olympic gold medal. I can't float to save my life. <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with it. Nothing but, to do with it. But everybody can swim, so there's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be scared of, and especially with the summer around the corner, it's never too late to learn. I don't care how young or old you are. My mom is getting swim lessons, so it's it's never too late. <laughs> okay, give us a website that people can go to. Uh, the best way to uh, sign up for Make a Splash is to go to makeasplash.org, and you can sign up your child or another child that you know um, and get swim lessons. Thanks to Conoco, or I'm sorry, Phillips 66 and USA Swimming Foundation, um, it's very easy.